Welcome back to Linda's uh, uh, video blog. Today we are going to talk about egg retrievals. Uh, appropriate timing because we are just starting a cycle today and uh, egg retrievals are starting to come up. So one of the things that I've learned over my time doing this is, uh, and you guys know this about me philosophically, is I really want everybody to really understand what to expect, what's normal. Um, like I say, all the things I know about your cycle I want you to know because the more you know and understand about things, uh, the less stressful you are. The unknown is a scary enough thing. There's plenty of things that we can't control in this whole field, but you understanding everything and, and being comfortable with everything is, uh, is key to me, so hence why I do these videos. So let's talk about egg retrieval. Uh, like I said, we're just about to uh, start them up for this uh, cycle and one of the things over the years I've learned is people sometimes have expectations about what to expect with an egg retrieval. So let me start by just kind of explaining, at least here um, with Dr. Sher in Las Vegas, how we get you ready and what to expect that day. Now, of course, you've already been instructed prior to your egg retrieval, you've gotten your HCG trigger shot. That trigger shot is always will basically time the egg retrieval. Now in our case, and different docs vary a little bit on this, we do our egg retrievals 35 and a half hours after a trigger shot. Some docs will do it at 34 hours or it's anywhere from 34 to 36 hours usually. We do ours at 35 and a half and the truth is is you'll ovulate anywhere from maybe, I don't know, 40 to 48 hours after a trigger shot. So if you do find your egg retrieval doesn't quite run on time, and sometimes that happens if egg retrievals prior to you take a little bit longer than expected, don't panic, you're not going to ovulate. That's not to say I haven't seen women who do ovulate markedly early uh, do that at egg retrieval time, but very rare to see that. But roughly, your again, your HCG trigger shot has been timed to make your egg retrieval happen at a certain point. Now, uh, the day of your egg retrieval, you'll come in, usually you've been told not to eat or drink uh, after midnight the night before or something like that because of course you are going to have IV anesthesia and be asleep for the egg retrieval so we don't want any problems while you're under anesthesia. You'll get here uh, anywhere from a half hour to an hour before your scheduled egg retrieval. The nurse will uh, get you changed into those cute little uh, gowns and get vital signs, start an IV, that kind of thing just to get you all ready. Then when it comes your time, uh, usually you'll have uh, a nurse anesthetist or an anesthesiologist uh, come out to meet you and ask you questions about your general health and all that kind of thing. Then you'll be taken into the operating room, the OR, to get you ready, get you put in the, the little exam room and the exam table and all that kind of thing. Most often the anesthesiologist will give you some kind of, I like to call a cocktail, before your egg retrieval to make you feel good, but you're not asleep yet. Now. When it's time to start the egg retrieval, you will get your full IV anesthesia. You will take about, usually it's about a 15 minute nap for the egg retrieval. You go to sleep quick and you wake up quick. As a matter of fact, you'll, you'll find it hard to believe that you actually had your egg retrieval. Now during the egg retrieval, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, basically the doctor will use a very long uh, needle and we'll use a vaginal ultrasound probe and we'll go through the needle, we'll go through the vaginal wall up to each ovary and into each little follicle and he will aspirate, he will empty out every follicle you've grown. Now sometimes you've got small follicles there and of course we'll probably get immature eggs out of those but you know they're there so we're going to empty all the follicles that you've got. That fluid is then given over to the embryology lab and they're looking, they're looking for eggs. Now, uh, like I said, you'll wake up fairly quickly after the egg retrieval. Uh, you'll usually recover here in the office anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. Um, sometimes, again, everybody varies. Sometimes you're a little bit crampy afterwards. Usually the nurse will give you a little heating pad to put on your tummy. Um, again, you've got, you'll have gotten medication usually to keep you comfortable. Um, they can continue to give you uh, medication for cramping. But again, usually it's nothing major. Most people are ready to, to move on and go home or go back to the hotel within about an hour. Now, during the egg retrieval as well, you're usually always given, uh, anybody who's having an egg retrieval will be getting an IV uh, antibiotic as well, uh, just to prevent, you know, infection. Some of you are actually even on oral antibiotics too. This is usually if you're getting a, an embryo transfer. Uh, now, what to expect afterwards. Generally, in general, I will usually tell people to be a couch potato the rest of the day. 
you know, you don't have to be on bed rest or anything, but certainly just be a couch potato. Usually, you can resume basic activities the next day. Some people even go back to work, etc. Now, of course, this is where everybody varies, and it's one thing, it's important to me for you guys to understand, you know, what to expect. Most people don't have any, you know, serious side effects after an egg retrieval. Probably the most disturbing side effect one can have is you can, you can get a lot of pain. Now, and, and, and it might not be right away. Remember, you had anesthesia that kept things all uh, nice and pleasant, and you get back to the hotel or your home, and uh, you notice it's not so bad. You, may even, you might even go out for dinner at that night, which I would recommend not doing, by the way. Really, you know, give yourself some time to rest. And people will find that maybe later in that day or what have you, they all of a sudden start, to, or in the middle of the night, they start to have this excruciating pain. And of course, you know, inherently when we have that kind of pain, you know, our brain tells us something's wrong. And if we have a partner, or, you know, who sees us in that kind of pain, likewise, they're going to panic. And this is one of the most important things I want to do is I, I want you to know this is normal. Again, there isn't, when I think of, you know, what could go wrong, you know, um, if bleeding after an egg retrieval is very, you, certainly I expect a little bit of spotting, you know. But to say to have some kind of, you know, internal bleeding, any, any kind of bleeding episodes that would ever happen after an egg retrieval would be happening immediately following an egg retrieval. You wouldn't be going back to the hotel and having me worried about that later, and that isn't anything in 15 years I've seen. Uh, getting an infection, again, because you've got the IV antibiotic, um, I haven't seen infections occur. And again, it's not anything you'd be feeling immediate, but immediately in that day or so after the egg retrieval, it's, uh, how do I want to say this? I don't want to say it's, un it's, it's, it's unusual to feel extreme pain. Um, it happens with enough frequency. M most people do not have that. They're a little bit uncomfortable. They listen to their body for that first 24 hours and take it easy. And maybe a little crampy here and there. Maybe if they move around a certain way, they might you know, be aware of their ovaries. But again, nobody's in extreme pain. But it does happen. Even if I say it happens in 1 in 10 patients, this can freak you out because, again, you weren't expecting it. Now, here's the reality I always like to teach my patients, you know, keep in mind from an anatomical point of view, the ovaries and the testicles are the same tissue. Now, if I told you or I asked you, what would you expect if your partner, you know, took a fast soccer ball right into the groin? What would you expect to happen? And you would tell me, oh, well, he'd be rolling around on the floor in agony, you know, eyes watering, uh, uh, feeling a little nauseous. And I, I wouldn't be worried at all. I would expect that. I feel bad. I'm so sorry. I know that's a ton of pain, but I wouldn't be worried about it. And the reality is, is that's what you're experiencing now. Same kind of pain. Nothing that I'm worried about. I'll get calls in the middle of the night, and people will be panicked because they they weren't expecting this. And and again, they felt good right after the acre people, so they're obviously assuming something must be horribly wrong. And the reality is, is nothing's wrong. Again. We've got to respect. Now, usually you and I, we our ovaries are very well protected in this body. You and I don't have you know, trauma to the ovaries. Well, now you do. Now you had an egg retrieval, and so now you've had trauma to the ovaries. So, again, that can happen. Listen to your body. Please stay off your feet if you do experience this. It won't go farther than about 24 hours. But, again, it's the kind of thing that if you're not aware of it, I've had people go over to the emergency room because they don't know what, you know, this is, I wasn't expecting this. Something must be horribly wrong. And no, that's not the case. It's just that your ovaries have been picked on. And again, respect your body, listen to it, and stay off your feet. Uh, for, and again, it's going to resume in about, let's say, resume. You might feel a little bit crampy residually going on, but you're not going to have this kind of intense pain where you're, you know, balled up in the fetal position in tears. Again, that can happen, and I'm not worried about you. Again, you know, it's, it's terrible to be in that kind of pain, and certainly you can, uh, we, we can prescribe some pain medications, and sometimes that will help. Uh, but again, it's not going to last more than about 24 hours to be in that kind of pain. Now, um, another thing that can come after egg retrieval is you can be bloating. You know, you, you grew all these follicles and uh, you, uh, of course we went in, we emptied them all, but they all fill back up with blood. That's, they all fill back up with blood. This is how our body works normally. We ovulate one egg each month and, you know, it fills back up with blood and it just kind of stays alive, if you will, because it's meant to be there to support an ensuing pregnancy. So now in this case, you might have had 10 to 20 follicles and they're all going to fill back up again. So that's why if you did feel a little bloaty going into an egg retrieval, don't expect that to automatically, you know, go away after the egg retrieval. Uh, it will stick around and if I get you pregnant, it'll stick around even a little bit more. 
Now, that's different than people who go into ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, where they go into this, and usually we've had these conversations, you know, ahead of time, maybe you've been coasted, and, and we have some worries or concerns. Now, the worries or concerns aren't that you're going to get sick from this, because if Dr. Schur or any of your doctor really feels that you're at risk for something, he'll usually postpone the transfer and freeze all the embryos so as to not get you pregnant and not make this markedly worse. Certainly, if you are feeling kind of bloaty and you feel like your tummy's getting a little bit bigger, um, staying well hydrated because of course that fluid that shifted into your tummy has all come out of your circulation system and you can become dehydrated so drinking things like Gatorade, electrolyte solution, you know even vitamin water or coconut water or just regular water but staying hydrated and urinating is going to be the key to making sure that we don't get sick from this but I won't be able to make that bloaty go away because so I have no trick to it if you're an egg donor or you're somebody who's freezing embryos and not planning on a transfer, it will resolve by the time you get your period, usually about 10 days after the egg retrieval. Now, following egg retrieval, what to expect information-wise. Of course, we're going to find out before you leave how many eggs did we get. And even more than that, we're going to find out the maturity level of these eggs. Now, when, when Dr. empties these follicles, we're getting one of three things. We're getting, and you're going to hear these acronyms, M2s, M1s, or GVs. Now M2s are eggs that have been through meiosis II. They are fully mature and these are the guys that have the ability to fertilize. Now just because we do the ICSI or the sperm injection on them doesn't automatically mean they do fertilize. That's Mother Nature's got to do that overnight. Uh, ICSI certainly will increase the likelihood that they'll fertilize. M2s, fully mature eggs. Now we may get some M1s, eggs that have gone through meiosis I. And this means that, uh, now we're going to do that ICSI uh, maybe about uh, two to four hours after the egg retrieval, so they may mature up still. Uh, lastly, you'll hear, hear something called GVs or germinal vesicles, and these are completely immature eggs. There's no hope that these guys will do anything. So sometimes you'll hear from the doctor, you had 10, maybe 12 eggs that are mature. That's because we had 10 mature M2s and maybe a couple M1s, and we're going to wait and see if they mature up. So that's what you're going to learn from egg retrieval, how we did. Of course, then for the next, you know, five to seven days we're going to continue to get embryo updates. My biggest advice by the way when we're getting egg and embryo updates is take some of that with a grain of salt. You know I know this is all we've got to go on right now that information but this information isn't ultimately what we're in all this for. We're in this to ultimately get a baby at the end of the day. Some of you will have lots of eggs and we won't have a good outcome even though there were a lot of eggs and some of you only have a few eggs and we'll have a great outcome. So take this information and realize for whatever it means the, the true end of the story is going to come down the road here. Um, so that's what to expect from an egg retrieval. I'm about to have a bunch of gals start going into egg retrievals this week and I want everybody to be informed about what to expect because again it's that taking away that fear factor that's going to help us be able to uh, tolerate all this better and keep that stress level down. As usual though if after egg retrieval you know you just feel like I've got to I've got to speak with somebody always know that you're you're there's always an answering service you call the office you'll always get put through to a nurse here in Las Vegas the nurses are on email all the time uh, weekends nights so you're always usually going to be able to reach us so you're not alone and of course me doing these videos for you make sure you might have to listen to this at 2 a.m. to remember you're not alone all right so I wish everybody great luck I'm excited about this upcoming cycle and uh, there's going to be another topic coming up soon and we'll be chatting soon we'll talk to you guys later bye bye